morning, like I told you last week, that there is someone known as the burden bearer. And this morning we want to talk about him. The burden bearer. And I think it's one message that all of us need to hear. That there is someone called the burden bearer. Let me not make uh, Let me, not, let me not sound as if I don't understand what you are going through because I'm past, probably passing through the same thing. You see, life is tough. Tell your neighbor, life is tough. There are certain realities we need to understand. Please. And the earlier we have that understanding, the better for us. Do you get what I'm saying? As a believer, there are certain realities of life that we have come to, we need to come to accept. Which will help our walk with God. Which will help us in our journey of life. Which will help us to face life in a better way. Am I making sense to you? One of such realities is that man that is born must die one day. I think that's one reality we have yet to comprehend. That you are born, you must die. So, death should not come to us as a surprise. That's part of the realities of life. It comes, in fact, it's something that you know it will happen anyway. Am I making sense to you? So, when it comes, of course, you grieve for a while, but then, because it's something that has to happen, you don't have a choice, life goes on. But God never changed. God will remain God. Open your mouth and shout hallelujah to him this morning. He will always be God in all situations and in all circumstances, whether good or bad, rain or sunshine. Job said, I can't take you from God and not take bad. This is a, this is a fact. The earlier we grab it, the better. Am I making sense to you? And the interesting thing is that he the issue of whether you grow old or grow, it doesn't matter. It has to happen. Jesus died at 33. Are you following me? That's sort of the realities of life. Are you following me? Because sometimes things happen and we, we, we feel so bad, but then we fail to ask ourselves, but is it not supposed to happen? Will it not happen one day? Are you following me? Number two is that Life that we have come to live here on earth is full of trouble. It's full of what? All through your life, up to the age you are in now, you have been in one battle or the other. Am I right or wrong? You battle in the womb to come to this world. From the time you came to this world, it has been one battle after the other. When you came in and they gave back to you, it was first battle of survival. Sometimes they have to hit them to cry. Am I making sense to you? In those days, if you don't, I mean, if, you, if they give back to you, you don't cry, you are dead. So from the day you are giving back to, you started crying. <laughs> you have to cry to survive. Am I making sense to you? So life is tough. I was studying the book of Genesis chapter 35 concerning the story of Rachel. I mean concerning the story of Jacob and his family when God told them to move to Bethel. In that same Genesis chapter 35 <laughs> Rachel gave back to Benjamin. And immediately after she gave back to Benjamin, she died. Immediately. The thing that struck me, which I want all of you to listen to this one very carefully. Those of you that hold the world so highly, and you take everything as if it's a must, it must it's a do or die. And then when you don't have it, you want to die. 
you feel God has not been good to you, you are sad. I want you to listen to what I'm about to say this morning. If you follow the story of Rachel very well, from the time she married Jacob till the time she died, it's been one battle after the other. Am I right? He's in one battle after the other. Ravelry between her and her sister, quarreling every day and not dressed. The only time they agreed was when they agreed to go with Joseph, with Jacob. When God said he should leave and they agreed. That was the only time they agreed. But prior to that time, he's in one battle after the other. So tell me, what did she enjoy in that marriage? <laughs> Are you following me? What did she really enjoy in that marriage? When you look at all the frights, I must marry Jacob, I must do this, and then and my, my this, and then I must have children. The Bible says when she gave birth to her second child, Benjamin, he, she died. She didn't even see them mature, not to see the goodness in their life. All through it was one battle after the other. So what is he gain? I'm asking you this morning. Many of you here this morning, elderly women, mothers who have been married, some of you, when you look at the past and you look at the marriage and everything, and you, look, you just ask yourself, okay, all this problem, all this wahala, what did that really gain? Are you following me? So you say, okay, my children and everything. But the truth of the matter is that not many have the privilege of seeing their children, the goodness in their lives. Bottom line, life is all about trouble. Life is full of challenges. So, don't let us, I'm not going to deceive myself, neither am I going to deceive you that life is easy. Life is never easy. Life is full of burdens. But the, the joy, the privilege we have as children of the Most High God is that we don't have to carry this burden alone. Tell somebody you don't have to carry this burden alone. You see, I see some of you mothers. I see some of you fathers. Dying daily. Because we are carrying what we are not supposed to be carrying. You are carrying what we are not supposed to be what? Do you know that thinking is a heavy weight? I don't know whether you understand what I'm saying. When you start thinking and worry about something, you are carrying a heavy weight. I've seen people who, while thinking about their children, God, this child, this, they stumble and they die. They were, they were healthy, but they stumble, they just see their leg, they fell, and that was it. Because the load they were carrying was too much. Many people have died, not the death of God. But as a result of the luggage that they are carrying that they should not be carrying in the area of burdens. I'm saying this this morning, beloved. That you have a choice to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living by stop worrying and handing over the burden to God or you die, yet God will still do what he will do but you will not say it. I have to be very frank with you this morning. Are you following me this morning? Particularly you mothers, I have to be very frank with you. You have a choice to see the goodness of the Lord in the love of your children while you are alive. And the only way you can do so is to stop worrying and handing over the thing to God. Or you have a choice to die and not see it, but God will still do what he will do in the life of those children. The only part is that you will not see it. But you will not have anybody to blame but yourself. Because you are carrying burden you should not be carrying. 
which can lead to hypertension, which can lead to stress, which can lead to death. Am I making sense this morning? If I'm talking to you, shout hallelujah. I want you to say after me, I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Whether the devil likes it or not. I've made up my mind that I will see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. If you have confessed it, shout a glorious hallelujah. Follow me this morning. So life is full of trials, challenges. Life is tough. Now turn with me to the book of Isaiah, chapter 53, verses 1 to 12. Matthew 11, chapter 28. Verse 28 to 30. Isaiah 53, 1 to 12. And then open to Matthew 11, 28 to 30. Just mark it. Now Isaiah 53, verses 1 to 12 says, Who has believed our message? To whom has the Lord's power been revealed? He grew up in his presence like a young tree, like a root out of dry ground. He had no form of ma or majesty that would make us look at him. He had nothing in his appearance that would make us desire him. He was despised, rejected by people. He was a man of sorrows, familiar with suffering. He was despised like one from whom people turned their faces and we didn't consider him to be worth anything. He certainly has taken upon himself our suffering and carried our sorrows. But we thought that God had wounded him, beat him and punished him. He was wounded for our rebellious acts. He was crushed for our sins. He was punished so that we could have peace and receive healing from his wounds. We have all strayed like a sheep. Each one of us has turned to go his own way. The Lord has laid all our sins on him. He was abused and punished, but he didn't open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. He was like a sheep that is silent. When his wool is caught off, he didn't open his mouth. He was arrested, taken away. And George, who would have thought that he would be removed from the world? He was killed because of my people's rebellion. He was placed in a tomb with the wicked. He was put there with the rich when he died, although he had done nothing violent and never had spoken a whole life. Yet it was the Lord's will, will to crush him with suffering. When the Lord has made his life a sacrifice for our wrongdoings, he will see his descendants for many days. The will of the Lord will succeed to him. He will see and be satisfied because of his suffering. My righteousness servant, my righteous servant will acquit many people because of what he has learned through suffering. My righteous servant will acquit many people because of what he has learned through suffering. I'm coming to that. He will carry their sins as burden. So I will give him a share among the mighty and he will divide the prize with the strong because he poured out his life in death and he was counted with sinners. He carried the sins of many he intercedes for those who are rebellious. Glory be to the name of God. Now, if, now, if you had followed this scripture very well that I've read, you will be able to see something clearly there. That the life of a true, genuine servant of God is patterned after Christ. The life of a true, genuine servant of God living up to his calling is patterned after Christ. The same way we look at them, 
in their suffering. We don't know the amount of burden they are carrying and our weight, or the weight of our sins on them, praying and interceding for us. We keep rebelling. I've said it sometimes, one time I say, it is your death that I'm dying. But even when I say it, nobody understands that fact. Am I making sense to you? Are you following me? Yet we ignore them. We say, we say ah, look at them. Sometimes God allowed them to go through certain afflictions in life so that they can be able to help us. Through their suffering, we are saved. They can intercede because they've gone through it. Am I making sense to you? But while they're going through that suffering, we are busy condemning them. Only God knows. God has abandoned him. God has left him. Can you see his life? But we don't know that everything was for our sake. As I'm reading that scripture, I'm looking at my life. And I want you to take time to go back to that scripture and read it again. And confirm if what I'm telling you this one is a lie or truth. I'm looking at my life. I'm looking at my relationship with you. And I can see, yeah, this is what Jesus went through. So indeed, I cannot be a servant if I don't go through it. They are carrying a body. But what are we doing? We are laughing. The weight of our sins is upon them. When you rebel, when you are working against the will of God, when you are doing the, what, something wrong, I don't sleep. I'm interceding. I'm worried, but you don't care. I'm carrying your body. Am I making sense to you this morning? Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what I'm saying? That is who a true servant of God is. He carries the weight of your sin. You cannot really fully understand the pain that they go through. When you are in sin or when things are wrong with you, when you are sick, they are, they are sick with it because it's, it's on them. Are you following me? When you have a problem, it's on them. They are praying. But the truth of the matter is that the Bible now says we even have a greater burden bearer. Do you know, beloved, understanding the role of our Lord Jesus Christ in our lives makes us to roll on the ground for him every morning. That nobody needs to tell us to worship him before we start to worship him. We can't greet him without kneeling down. The highest level of honor that we can accord to any man on earth should be given to him. At the mention of his name, what we hear, J, eh? what is he saying? Understanding his role in our lives. But it's not just for us to live well on earth, but also to gain eternal life. The Bible says he's even busy interceding for us. You and I are living this morning because of his intercession. Because if by our sin alone, we'll would have been dead. God would have been fed up. But every minute, every second, he keep pleading. He keep interceding. God, please just overlook it. Just forgive them. Because even what, I'm sure you will remind God that you remember even for me what they did to me. But I had to beg you to forgive them. Because they don't know what they're doing. Up to the time when I see some of my spiritual children behaving in their rebellious act, and when you talk to them the way they behave, I just say to myself, obviously this person, he doesn't know what he or she is doing. I had to come to that conclusion in order not to get angry. And just agree that at that point in time, the person is spiritually insane. Because if I don't, if I actually take it to mean that you know what you are doing, we will not just talk, we will fight. 
we, it will develop into physical. Particularly when you do something against my God, I will actually get into physical and fight you. That how dare you? But because I come to have to un understand that that person is crazy at that time, just no, it's just, just devil has taken over. And when that happens, what I need to do is to pray for the devil to release the hold over him or her. Am I making sense to you? Are you following me this morning? Because if you fully understand the role of our Lord Jesus Christ and what he stands, his presence, his purpose in our lives, every morning we will roll before him. When it's time for worship, nobody will need to tell us to come early. It will be a joy, a desire. And as they are coming in, you are running straight to the altar to worship him first, even before the service starts. That they have to come and carry, you know, we want to start service. Before. Not that you will come in and sit down and be talking and be laughing. Because from the moment you leave your house, your intention is to come and worship. Eh? I'm going to be the one who made me to wake up this morning. I'm going to be the one because of whom I'm alive. I'm going to give the one who blessed me yesterday. Because of him, I was able to get this contract. If you think of him that way, the one who carries my body, the one who went around to intercede for me, if you see him that way, your perception and your relationship with him will change instantly. That is the way I see him. That is why you can't understand. That's why you can't understand my feeling. That's why you cannot understand my passion. You say, what? Uh, uh, this one is too much. Huh? Are you following me this morning? This book of Isaiah explains to us in much detail, Isaiah 53 verses 1 to 12, who our Lord Jesus Christ and what he represents in our life. Who he is and what he represents in our life. Here he says, but we look at him anyhow. We don't take him important. We don't even imagine that is this one that can save us. Can the prayer of this person save me? Can the prayer of this person work for me? See, beloved, if you do it to your servant of God, you have done it to Christ. The same way that was the way they looked at Jesus in those days. This one, has he saved himself? Look at his life. How can he save me? Yeah, see, 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 see now. Even God has turned his back on him. That was what they said to him that time. As a prophet of God. And yet he claimed himself to be, to be, to be child of God. He claimed himself to be. They, they, they talk down on their savior, on the one who is carrying them. Meanwhile, as they are talking on down him, he's busy carrying God. Please just forgive them. The, their body is weighing him down. The same thing we do today. We look at the trials and the challenges in the last of our sound of God. And we wonder and ask ourselves, how can this one help me? How can this one save me? This one who has not saved himself. Look at him now. And God forbid we now come across some wicked souls who will help us also diagnose his life very well. And of course, there is no one that is born into this earth that does not want, that does not have one comma or red dots. Even our Lord Jesus Christ, if you look at his genealogy, you will say, I can somebody born from this generation, from this genealogy, be a savior. Am I making sense to you? Satan knows how to dip dig very well to bring out deaths if not from the person but from his generation to condemn why you should not see him am I making sense to you this morning Isaiah 53 verse 1 to 12 try to explain to us in detail our foolishness and you know one thing beloved it is failure to acknowledge that role that he died for our sake. That his dying, his death was because he was carrying a body, which is he carrying today. Failure to acknowledge that fact and to see him for who he truly is is the reason 
while we are dying carrying body is because of our the hypertension the stress we are having because we fail to acknowledge that there is someone who is there to carry our body so we are carrying it alone we are doing it alone I was praying for some people overnight because I can see that they are dying they are dying gradually because of what they are carrying there are people who are supposed to live up to 18, 19 but who will die at 60 something because they are carrying body they shouldn't be carrying nothing shortens your life faster than high blood pressure overthinking it can even make you to develop stroke well, and from that moment your life is over because when half of your body is paralyzed <laughs> are you following me this morning are you following me many people die before they die before they die physically death because already they are like living death and why because they are carrying body they should not be carrying and why because they fail to acknowledge the role of our Lord Jesus Christ that that is what his role is in our life to carry our body I thank God for him this morning I thank God that he is there to carry my body if you understand this fact beloved you feel light you see there are some things that we don't have business carrying there are some things we don't have business worrying about one of the things we worry about so much is our children am I right but we fail to understand one thing that that children, that child we are worried about in the first place is God's child. First and foremost, that we are only caretaker. If I've been given the tax to look after a child, and I'm doing all I could to look after the child, and I'm having difficulty, and I recall that there is one who is the father, is it not right for me to go to the father and say, Daddy, I've been trying to help your child. But you are the one who is the father. You will know him better than me. And you know how to handle him better than me. You know my concern for him. I'm thinking this way, but I don't even know what are your thoughts are towards him or her. So, this morning, please, is that something I need to do? Can you help me? Am I making sense to you? I take the body over to him. But you know the problem with you is that you don't see those children as God's children. You see them as your personal possession. You see their achievement in life as your own personal achievement. You look at the success of your children and use it to rate yourself that you have been successful. Am I making sense to you? Yeah, in a way, you can look at it from that point. But the truth of the matter, beloved, is that the life that A has come to live and B has come to live is entire. You see, nobody can judge my success and use it as a yardstick for his own success. Are you following me this morning? Am I making sense to you? It gets to a stage, beloved, that if I fail, I fail. And nobody can be blamed for me. Not even my parents. If I pass, it's for my own good. Are you following me? They've been just, oh, he's the son of so, 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 and then whatever. But the bulk of the work to succeed depends on me. Am I making sense to you this morning? Let somebody shout hallelujah. Let me tell you a story. A lady went to the mountain top to pray. When she got to the mountain top, to pray, 
because she has been told that her mother-in-law will be coming to visit and that's the first time she will meet the woman so she went to pray on the mountain that God do all these are local mountains that people go to to pray I said God do I'm told that my mother-in-law is coming God if I'm to speak my mind I don't even want mother-in-law I prefer not to have a mother-in-law because mother-in-laws are always there to scatter and destroy and they don't let you have rest if you recall the prayer I've been praying I've been praying that I don't want to marry anyone that has a mother but this one that is, she's coming God if she's going to scatter my, let her not even arrive let her die on the road in fact take her away before the wedding she prayed, let, him not, let him not even come she was praying and you know as she was praying she was praying very loud with all fire and thunder meanwhile the mother-in-law that was coming from the village went to the same mountain to pray God she went there to pray asking God that I, finally my son has presented a wife I'm going to meet her God please so make them the friend of each other help them more I pray if she's the right one if she's not the right one God show me and pray like that but she had this lady praying in fact I prayer could not make her concentrate so after she finished praying she now told the lady ah ah that kind of prayer is not good though why would you be praying for your mother-in-law to die? <laughs> the lady said, Mama, everything, she said, take, please. Everybody knows what you come here to do. Mama, first of all, you are here. I said, okay. She so left the mountain and was going. But before she went to the mountain, she stopped at the market. And she, she was going to her boyfriend's place. She said, okay, let her even go at least buy some things and cook in case the woman still comes. The mother-in-law, who she just abused, she did not know, got to the house before her because she was going straight. Both of them carried water from the mountain to give to the boy to drink. When the mother-in-law got there, she was still exchanging pencil trees. And I said, let her go to the toilet and ease herself. Then the girl came in. I said, when the girl came in, she said, ah, this is the water. I prayed on it drink it first. Inside the word I say, whatever I say is what you must do. It must be my will. She had done the prayer she has prayed inside the water. So, and he have told her as soon as you get to give him to drink. So, as soon as he said, before he said, just first of all drink this water and come in straight from the mountain. As the boy opened it, about to drink, the mother came out, came out of the bathroom and said, eh? Who? Don't drink that water. My son will not drink that water. Ah! So it is my son you are praying. It is me you are praying against. The son said what? The mother told her the story. So they drove her out of the house. She went to her mother. I hope you are listening to me this morning. She went to her mother and cried. Mama Wala Tishele, there's a problem. And told her what she did. Do you know the reply of her mother? The mother said, ah, ah, ah. even you they don't pray such prayer aloud. You should have prayed it quietly because you don't know who is hearing. And not only that, sometimes, sometimes, maybe next time, pray that God should break her leg or make her paralyzed instead of killing her. <laughs> the lady said, but I cannot afford though. No. I can't lose this man no. I must go, I must get him home. So the mother said, Don't worry, we will go there. I will help you beg. We carry people. I will tell them, see, as I'm busy with that, just with I've accepting it too. So they carried some people, they went. And then, Mama, please. She's a stupid girl. We've trained her. And then, thank God. Maybe God God actually allowed you to trouble so that you too can help us to train her. She's your daughter. Please accept her. Don't throw her away. She doesn't know what she's doing. I, I, please, I, we've scolded her. She, it will hit her. 
ought to just to get the woman to say, okay, all right. The mother of the child said, well, what is God? I've had, but it's in God's hands. I've had, but it's in God's hands. You know, when I look at that story, it, it reminded me of the story of the mother of Zebedee's children, James and John, who went to Jesus and said to Jesus, will you allow one of my sons to sit on the left and the other one on the right? And knelt down begging Jesus. And Jesus said, ha! Ah, can they drink the cup I'm about to drink? He said, ah, they will drink it. They will drink it. Just like the woman said, ah, from, whatever, from now, whatever you say, mama, she will listen. You are a mother. Jesus said, it's okay. But it's not up to me. But up to who? My father. Who sees and knows all things. Where am I going this morning? Sometimes we do what we call your Bible say, O fear te sile, O palakalaka. I've talked about this mother of every day student before. The concentration of the mother, of their mother, should have been that they live a life that will earn them that position by their character. But rather, she was concentrating on begging Jesus to just allow them when she ought to be concentrating on her son's ways of life and character to live such a life that will earn them that position. She wasn't even thinking about herself. Are you following me this morning? Am I making sense to you this morning? Now, that woman gave her a wonderful reply. And she said, it's up to God. The thing that I said to myself is, who is the unfortunate son of God that God would not say, marry a woman who wants to kill your mother? Who is that? What did that person do to God? And what is he saying? That God will not say, I want to punish you. Just like you are praying for your child, the mother of that boy is also praying. She went from the mountain to pray as well, asking God for help. Will God not say, ah, with all your prayers... I will still allow your son to marry this woman because she will not change that's her. They didn't even plan to change. They just said, let us just pretend. Are you following me? Now, I'm, I'm coming home to one thing. Is this. That sometimes what we worry about, the burden we carry are misplaced. They are what? Misplaced. Along, bless my son. God, prosper my son. God, make him successful. Give him a wife. Your son is doing yahoo yahoo. Your son is following big men to sleep with him. Your son's behavior is hopeless. And here you are dying that God, praying and fasting for God to bless your son. Is that not stupidity or madness? When you ought to be concentrating on the character of your son, if I should be praying on, the, on, the, on God, change my son. Because when your son changes, the blessings of God will locate him. So you see, beloved, that even 
the burden we are carrying. Most times, it's a misplaced body. If you die carrying such body, with this kind of example I've given you, you just die in useless death. In fact, heaven will judge you. Are you following me? Matthew 11, 18, 28 to 30 says, Come to me, all who are tired from carrying heavy loads. Now, when he talks about these heavy loads, he's talking about loads that truly and genuinely you should be carrying. Truly and genuinely. If I've done everything right, if I'm training my child in the way of the Lord, if I'm doing everything and someone along the line is not listening, I know of a mother who prayed and said, Father, my child is about to be promoted. But the way he, he, she's behaving already, I'm not too happy. If this promotion will make her worse, don't give her. That's a good mother. Are you following me? Her major burden was for the character of the child, was for the way of life of the child, was for the godliness of the child. What is your burden all about? Because you also need to identify what your burden is all about. And before you can give a burden to Jesus, you must have done your own part. Are you following me? I just don't want you to just hand over just any burden to God. Hand over a child that you have not done well, you have not done your thing. Say, God, oh yeah, just bless him or her. It's my body. My body for him is to be blessed. So, God, I just want you to bless him. Oh yeah, I'm handing it to him. Oh. It's up to you to bless him. Oh. That's not the kind of body I'm saying you should hand over this morning. Having done your own part, hand it over to God. Let the heaven see. Am I making, are you following? Do you get what I'm saying this morning? I'm not trying to preach a message that is not balanced. I want you to understand so that you don't leave there confused or going to do the wrong thing. Or as soon as you Pastor said we should hand over the body. She be handed over. Have you done your own part? There is a part you have to play in every situation. He says, come to me. Those who are tired, you have been praying, you have been fasting, and righteously for that matter, righteously for that matter, the mother of that lady had been praying for her daughter to get married, but not righteously. Not focusing on her character, not, not doing something on her character or her way of life, but she's praying, and she says it's a burden. And let's assume that she comes to church and says, I give her to God, say, God, do my daughter, I hand over, bless her. That's not the kind of body I'm talking about. Are you following me? But when you have done everything, the child is of well behaved, everything is right, you don't even know what is going on anymore, she's doing this, she's doing that, but the enemy just, or whatever it is, and it's weighing you down and you want to see the goodness of your child in the land of the living, and you have done all you could, and everybody can see that, yes, then you can go to God and say, God, please, now, over to you. Please, I want us to get one thing clear. Fathers, start telling your wives the truth. When they start running, hey, my mom, tell them what they are supposed to do. Mothers, tell the husbands what they are supposed to do. Parents, children, this is what you are supposed to do. Let us be sincere with ourselves. Friends, colleagues, tell each other, this is not what you should be doing, this is what you should have been doing. Because the world will become a better place when we become honest with each other. If you are hearing me, shout hallelujah. Are you following me this morning? You see, the messages, the, the word of God has been, has been, has not been, has, in most cases, was never preached balanced. It has always been tilted to one side, making, oh, Jesus, he doesn't just carry anybody. He doesn't 
just carry any what, any burden. You have to understand that fact as well. Are you following me this morning? Okay. You say I should help you carry the burden of your child to become well. And you want him to prosper. You want him to do well. But you are supporting your child in doing something that is against my principle for wealth. How can I help you? In other words, what you are actually not telling me is to go against my principle because you want to please your child. Is it possible? If you try with man and you succeed, you can never try with God and you will succeed. You see, one thing I love about God is that he's not going anywhere. He's not anxious for anything. He's not in a hurry for anything. Am I making sense to you? He told Moses, he said, let me wipe them off. I'll start all over again. Our Lodun come. We are the one in a hurry. We are the one that is anxious. God is not anxious. And we need to get this fast. We are the one that will expire. God will never expire. Generation to generation, it will remain the almighty God. It will not change. Are you following me this morning? If you are hearing me, shout hallelujah, somebody. He says, place my yoke over your shoulders. Learn from me. Because I am gentle and humble. Then you will find rest for yourselves. Because my yoke is easy and my body is light. Psalm 68 verse 19 says, Thanks be to the Lord who daily carries our burdens for us. God is our salvation. We have a burden carrier. We have a burden carrier. Tell yourself, I have a burden carrier. Look at him and say, you have a burden carrier. Beloved, this ought to give us sense of relief. Let me tell you when I go to God, when I pray, I pray. This prayer for God to help you and I, this year, is a prayer you must pray every day, every minute, every second. When you remember, just pray it. I can go to God and say, Daddy, help me with your children. Help me with your church. God, please, those children that I'm talking to, that are not listening, this rebellious heart, and I begin to mention and mention all the things about them. God, help me. How do I reach them? I'm taking that burden to who? To God. But you see, I can go to him. Why? Because on my own, I've actually done what I should do. I told you the truth. I didn't lie to you. I cancel you. I put you in the direction of the truth. When you are wrong, I told you you are wrong. I didn't try to, I, I didn't patronize you for money. I didn't treat you. I, all, God knows that all I want is the right thing for you to do and that's why I'm fighting you. But every time I fight you, you get it all wrong. If I carry such burden to God, he will carry it. But not when I lie to you. Not when I don't tell you the truth. Not when I say things because I want to collect something from you. And then I say, ah, the word is saying my children are not blessed. So God, please just bless them. When even me, the role I'm supposed to play in your life to make you blessed, I did not, I did not play it. Why would, would God listen to me? Are you following me this morning? I hope you are hearing me. See, beloved, God will bear our burdens if we let him. If we have done everything we ought to do, he will bear it. First and foremost, we have to obey his commands. He cannot bear our burden if we don't obey him. My son cannot come to me to help him if all I've been telling him to do, he refused to do. I'm trying to understand, let me make you understand, beloved, that Jesus being a burden bearer is not automatic. There are roles that we ought to play in this matter. It's after we have done what we are supposed to do and we are not succeeding, then he will bear the body. The sons of prophets says they wanted a large expanse. They wanted a space. 
Elisha said, okay, go ahead. You have my permission. He said, we didn't go with us. He said, yes. Elisha did not just go and acquire land and say, so you have to go and start living. Elisha said, they should go and do the work. You want it, you have to work it. But in, along the line, if, while you are working it righteously, if you stumble, if you have a problem, call on me, I'll carry the body. Am I making sense to you? You see, this message, first of all, calls for an inward review. You have to do a personal inward review of your relationship with God. Whether you have been working in obedience, whether you have been doing His will, whether you have been training your children where the way you should train them as a parent, whether you, as the way you, where you work in your office, that you say you have not been promoted, you have been doing what you are supposed to do. You have to do an inward review. First and foremost, as a student, have you been reading your books? Have you been studying? And you say you want to pass. How do you want to pass? If you have been studying, reading your books, but there's a lecturer that's not saying you will not pass, then you can carry the burden to God. That one is beyond you. Am I making sense to you? If you are reading, you are studying, you cannot ask me, you don't know why. You can go to God. God, I'm making efforts. I don't know why. Is there any force behind it? But you have first made the right effort. Are you listening to me? Not when they told you this is what you are supposed to do. You hear the word of God. You hear the sounds of God address you. This way of life is done. You say, no, I must do it. No, I must do it. Then the next thing is you now go to the altar and pray for God. God, give me a husband. Give me a wife. Be while everything they've told you that will earn you, you have rejected. And you now want God to carry that burden for you. You are wasting your time. Are you following me? That's why it looks as if God cannot do things. That's why you say, but I've been praying, 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 praying. They say, God, he didn't carry my own body, no. Check yourself. Have you done all things righteously? Accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior is not enough. You have to accept his command. You have to accept his principle. You have to accept his ways. You have to accept his command. You have to be ready to do what he says you should do. That is when you have truly accepted him as your Lord and Savior. But for as long as you are still doing your own, working by your own intelligence and your own head knowledge, and you say you have accepted him as your Lord and Savior, you are wasting your time. Beloved, this message is so timely and coming very early in the year that if we are able to listen and walk it, this year will be a successful year for each and every one of us. Are you following me this morning? As easy as it may sound, <laughs> but it calls for a lot of self-discipline, zeal, and determination plus a lot of sacrifice. Because what it means, first and foremost, is that you must let go of your desire now. First and foremost, start following God and doing what God says you should do. When you have done it, and then you are not succeeding, you can go to him. Am I making sense to you? So it calls for, first of all, reassessing yourself and making up your mind that from now on, I will follow God. I will obey his command. I will do as he says. No longer my head knowledge. You as a parent will be on your case of your children to do only what God says. To follow God's command. And you will help them. You will be on their case. It's when both of you have done this. You can carry the body to God. God, I've done it. What else should I do? The child can go to God. God, I'm doing what you asked me to do, but nothing is happening. Then Jesus will take over. Are you following me this morning? You see, we have not been created by God to just be spoon fed. We have been created by God to think, to have the ability to walk, to walk as success. 
God told Adam, even after creating Adam of Eden, he said, Adam, you will walk the ground. You will tilt it. You will, you will do these things. I've done everything, but you need to tilt it and walk. God did not create us so that we can just relax. Everything will come in our way. He gave us certain abilities that will help us to succeed. But with those abilities as well, we still need the help. That is when we have utilized those abilities correctly. Are you following me this morning? If you are hearing me, shout hallelujah. So after we have done what we are supposed to do, then we, we can go to him to carry our burdens. But the mistake we make at that point in time, even those who try to walk righteously, is that they try to carry it on their own. One of the things I've seen about believers who think they are holy, who think, because nobody is holy, who think because they don't do certain things, they are holy. They don't fornicate, they don't commit adultery, they don't Meanwhile, they still lie. Meanwhile, there are other things. But let's even say that do assume that they are holy. And let's assume that they are holy. One thing about them is that they don't believe they need anybody to achieve anything. There is this sense of spiritual arrogance and pride that they say to themselves, I can go to God myself. I, I know I'm, I'm serving God. I'm doing all I could. I should be able to pray. I should be able to tell him. I should be able to, uh, I know if I walk it, I should be able to get it. And they carry that arrogance into the things they do. And so when things are not working well, they can't understand. They worry, I prayed and everything. But they were praying in their own, in their own strife. They are praying their own, they, it's not as if they came to God, God, I've tried. You are the only, I surrender. Take over. They are like the stories of the fishermen who were in the boat. Jesus was there. But because of their expertise, because it's, they, they are fishermen, they've been used to the waters, that the last person they decided to call on was Jesus because he was not a fisherman. They are fishermen. The storm they've handled before. So they didn't even bother to call him because they felt they were professionals. Some of you feel you are professional, holy, holy woman and holy man. That with, 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 your, with your holiness, you should be able to tackle any problem. That's why you are wrong. No matter how righteous you are, there is a limit to how much you can achieve. In fact, whatever God answers, whatever prayer you pray and it works, is the one that God chooses to answer. Are you following me this morning? God looked at Abraham and said your righteousness is not, is not enough. Obey my command is not enough to earn your blessing. But I will bless you just because you have faith in me. Are you following me this morning? In the present day everybody has several troubles. We all have problems to deal with. All at the same time. But the word of God gives us assurance that we have somebody who can carry our body. When we have done what we are supposed to do and living righteously before him. Living what? Righteously. Living what? Say it again. Living what? That word is absent in church today. Holiness. Is not something that is common. It's not something that you hear in church today. Upon man's hand there shall be deliverance and there shall be holiness. And the children of God shall possess their possession. Holiness is very, is key. You have to be walking in holiness. You have to be walking righteously. What are your burdens this morning? Is it coping with the immoral behavior of the society? I have that burden. But before I can talk about the burden of 
immoral, immoral behavior of the society, the first question God will ask is that, what have you done? I will say, I've picked about it. I've talked about it. I keep talking to people about it. Then they say, okay, all right. Am I making sense to you? I've not encouraged it in any way. I fought it even at my own expense. No matter what I stand to lose, I don't care. But I'm still burdened. Your body may be the society, the way the world is going. And as a believer, I expect you to have such body. The way the world is going, the way people are behaving, the level of immorality, gay, lesbianism, and all the rest. It should bother you not to talk of if your child is really involved in such an act. Am I making sense to you? Where is your child now? Where are your children now, this very moment? A few days ago, they still said they went to carry some people from night club. In this present day of coronavirus, which is very, very serious, those who went to that club yesterday, they'll be sleeping now. What kind of life is your child living? Are you following me this body? What are the body? Is it about the arrogant behavior of people nowadays? Arro everybody is arrogant. Many people are just arrogant and full of themselves. Is enough for concern for you as a believer because the way the world is going everybody is full of themselves it's, it's, there is no way a society that's full of arrogant people can succeed there will be problem are you following me in Nigeria today any small thing do you know who I am it's a very common statement with many people and they carry it on their head. Even those who are not saying it, their action says it all. Even in the eyes of God, we are not humble. If you consider the humility of the believers of today to the humility of believers of old, the departure is unbelievable. Believers of old cannot look at sons of God in the face. Believers of today talk face to face and even question everything has gone upside down money possible power has made the head of people scatter they are even arrogant before God Is your body inconsistent of workers? The inconsideration that workers have. Many today, the, I, I've seen in the lives of many people selfishness. All they care is about themselves. They don't care how it affects others. It's a body. It's a body. If you look at the society today, there is so much that you will have body for in the way people behave. Even family members are inconsiderate. Many people are living under stress as a result of broken relationship, insincerity, lie, deceit. You don't even know who truly loves you anymore. You don't even know why somebody is in relationship with you anymore. People are in relationship just for their own personal benefit to say, I'm married. Not because they love the man, not because they love the woman, but because they, to the society, now I am married. From the very beginning, it was for their own personal selfish motive. It's not because I want to go into the marriage and see how I can complement the life of this man how can complement the life of this woman? How can make something good out of his life or her life? How we can work together? How we can build a better society? No, but just that 
Me too, I'm not missus. I have children. So selfish. Now, if you if you're a believer, indeed, if you look at the way the world is right now, you have a lot of burden on your mind. Burden that you need to cry to God and pray to God over every day. Not just praying, but you are making effort. Anytime you see wrong, you speak out. There's so much burden in the world today. Many that which we cannot handle, but we can just talk to, we can just do our own best. But most of which we can go to God. You know, God is waiting. God is waiting. I believe what God is waiting. God does not expect us to solve the problem of the world. But God is waiting for us to develop a burden for the way the world has become and come to him to help us. Because that is what makes him know that indeed we are his children. If you are not as concerned the way God is concerned, at least one tenth, even in small, about the world, the world has become today, you are not a child of God. You ought to be concerned. But he knows that, yes, we can't handle it. But he expects us to come to him and bring it to him. If you're hearing me, shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Is he coping with the rude behavior of people? People are very rude now, proud. You see, uncontrollable children, many children to take them, you can't even control them. The mother would say, I leave her, I leave her. Hey, it's okay, it's okay. Things have scattered. The world has turned upside down. Not a cut of burden to pay rent, burden to pay school fees. Burden to live a successful life in the in the world where there is total corruption, you have to bribe to get anything. But like I said, we have a burden bearer. We have someone who can carry our burden, and he's only waiting for us to come to him. They are there. I've analyzed few this morning. They are there. He's waiting for us to say, you know what? come to me. But before we come to him, we must have been walking in righteousness. We must have been obeying his commands. We need to get to a point that we frown at what Jesus frowns at and love what he loves. The 12th chapter of the book of Isaiah described our Lord Jesus Christ as the man of sorrows. A man of sorrows. Can I be honest with you, beloved? A true genuine servant of God in this present world today is a man of sorrows. Because every direction you turn to, what you see will make you sad. There's hardly anything that makes you happy. That's the honest truth. A true child of God today will be a man, a man or woman of sorrow. Because every direction you see, what you see is corruption. And there is no way you see what God detests and you'll be happy. The Bible says Jesus is acquainted with grief and disappointment. He saw, he expressed all this and despised and rejected by those around him. Yet, he offered himself for our sins to make us accepted to God. Can you see how much body he carried and is willing to carry and is still carrying? We are redeemed today by the blood of the Lamb because we are Christians. We have been adopted to the family of God. Jesus knew that life is tough and filled with troubles and filled with sin. And he knew we could not handle all these things on our own. But he says, you just walk righteously and leave the rest to me. Whatever problem you have, bring it to me. But first, walk righteously. In Isaiah 11, 28, he says, come unto me, all you who are labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. 
This morning, Jesus is inviting all of us. Anyone here this morning who is heavily laden, who has labored and yet not seen results, and he has worked righteously to say, you know what? Bring that burden to me. Bring that problem to me. And I'll be ready and I will carry it for you and solve whatever problem there is. He is inviting you this morning. I'm going to stop here today and continue on part two of this sermon next week Sunday.